to improve your self-esteem, you need to change the way you think and feel about yourself. Remember, the image that you think you project is different to what people see. You may feel you don't speak well or that you haven't made an interesting point, but those listening to you can think that you've made a very strong point. To overcome these issues, focus on all the things you've already achieved in your life, whether it's running a house with all the financial planning that takes or driving a car. If you can learn these things, you can learn anything. So take that first step and change things. If you run a house, you're probably well used to food labels. Let's have a look at how to read them. Apart from telling you how to cook food, the food label on the side of a product gives you a lot of information. It tells you about the ingredients, but most interestingly of all, it tells you about nutritional value. For example, let's take a look at this food label taken from a tin of beans. Under nutrition on the tin, it lists typical values per 100 grams. If you're on a diet, then you'd expect not to gain weight when you eat beans, as the fat content is quite low, at 0.4 grams. However, if we take a closer look, we can see that there's a high concentration of carbohydrates in a tin of beans, and this means there's a lot of sugar in the tin. Sometimes the label will specify how much sugar is included in the carbohydrates figure. In this case, only 2.4 grams of the 12 grams is sugar. When reading food labels, different words for sugar often appear on the label. For example, any word on a food label ending with the letters O-S-E is likely to describe a form of sugar. So the next time you see fructose, lactose or glucose on a label, remember it's another word for sugar. If you don't have the confidence to go back to formal academic training, it's a good idea to check out your local community centre to see which non-academic courses they have available. Try doing something that interests you. That could be gardening or art or a craft like this one, a decades-old tradition of creating paper flowers within the travelling community. <laughs> Any practical course is a good starting point because you begin to see the results immediately and it gives you confidence in your own abilities. It also gives you the opportunity of working alongside people just like yourself. If you do make the decision to go back to academic learning, you can attend your local VEC for reading and writing courses. They can provide a one-to-one -one tutor or group tuition according to your needs. Call the NALA free phone number 1-800-20-20-65 for details of your local services. Now in any class or many other situations you find yourself in, like having to write a letter for example, you will find that proofreading is a very useful skill. Have a look at these useful guidelines. Proofreading means reading and correcting written material. Publishers of books and magazines employ people as proofreaders to make sure there are no mistakes in content. If you have something important to write, like a reply to a job offer, it's a good idea to write out your thoughts quickly in a first draft. When writing a draft, the important thing is to get your thoughts on the page as quickly as possible so that you don't forget something very important. Now don't worry about handwriting or spelling at this point. When you are satisfied that you've expressed the point you want to make, you can then proofread. This means checking that the spelling, punctuation and paragraphs are correct. For example, Check for missing full stops, capital letters at the beginning of a sentence, spelling of difficult words, and so on. Now you simply rewrite the piece, including your corrections. It's a good idea to check it again just to make sure you found all the mistakes. You will find a proofreading exercise on page 159 of the workbook. Any barrier to learning makes the learning experience more difficult. But don't use the barrier as an excuse. You know, I can't do the English lessons because I've got nobody to mind the children. Lack of childcare is an obstacle, of course, but maybe there's a creche attached to an education centre near you. Your course coordinator will be able to tell you what supports are available to help. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> As she looks back over her achievements, Valerie can appreciate how far she's come 
and she's busy making plans for the future. So I started classes in 1999 and in the beginning I opened some exam papers and I nearly fainted. I wanted to scream really. I just wanted to run out of the place and run away. I just didn't want to do it. I thought, no way. I really felt, I just cannot do this. I cannot do this, it's over. And my tutor, I have to say, my deaf tutor was fantastic. Encouraging me, taking her time. She really didn't give me any pressure at all. She gave me time to feel ready to do what I wanted to do. There was no pressure there at all. It was so much different from the kind of pressure you have in school. The school pressure would really put you off, but in this situation, it just was not the case. My aim really for the future is I want to take the Leaving Certificate. And I want to take six subjects in the Leaving. Hopefully, I'm going to take the exam. I know it's a couple of years, but I want to take it in 2005. And when that's done, really my dream and my aim is to have the confidence to help my daughter a little bit, just a little bit, with her homework. And so I don't have to depend on my husband to do things like that all the time. That myself and my daughter can learn together. And I really want to have the confidence outside with the hearing world to write notes, to be able to communicate in the shops and the hairdressers or hotels or whatever. And not have to depend on my husband and my friends all the time to go and do things for me. That part is over. I can do things now for myself. I want to show that I can do things for myself. I'm absolutely very strong about this and I'm very positive for the future. Friends of mine and other deaf people are joining the literacy classes an awful lot more and it's really growing and I think this is really important. It's very, very important for deaf people to join the literacy classes. Everybody has resources at their disposal which they can call upon to help overcome any barrier. Now these resources can be external like the adult literacy courses run here for travellers or internal like self-motivation to learn, determination and an interest in a subject which can go a long way to helping you. Try setting realistic goals and don't ask too much of yourself before setting out on a new venture. Putting too much pressure on yourself can cause an obstacle in itself. Now, some words don't always look the way they sound, and this can be a problem when it comes to correct spelling. So here's some tips on how to spell the words with the PH sound. The letters P and H have very distinct separate sounds. Think about the P in the word party and the H in the word happy. However, when the two letters P and H are joined together in a word, they combine to make the sound F, as in photograph, telephone and phrase. Knowing that PH will always sound like F will help when you're reading and come across words that may be unfamiliar, such as phobia or physician. The PH sound can occur anywhere in a word. It occurs twice in the words photograph and philosophy. It can be heard in the middle of the word morphine and at the end of words like geography and autograph. One benefit of knowing the F sound for PH is that it will help when using the dictionary. For example, if you're checking the spelling of a word that sounds like it begins with F and you can't locate it under F in the dictionary, then it's possible that you will find it under the PH words. The important thing to remember is that the spelling PH always sounds like F, regardless of where it's located in any word. You'll find more information on this on page 160 of your workbook. The Nala free phone support line is available to deal with any learning queries or to give you information on your local BEC literacy services. If you have any questions or would like some help with anything we have covered in this programme, call the Nala free phone number 1800 20 20 65. There is a team of specially trained tutors standing by to take your call, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's free and confidential. 
Well, that's just about all we have time for. But before we go, let's have a quick recap on what we learned this evening. We looked at the different kinds of barriers there are. Physical barriers like poor hearing or sight. Then there are those barriers inside us, like fear. And those barriers outside of our control, like lack of time. To help you find time for learning, we looked at making a learning timetable. You'll see timetables in schools, at bus stops, at airports, in all sorts of places. Timetables are a useful way of planning your time. Planning the time you have to study is a good way to use timetables. Nearly everyone suffers from obstacles within themselves. Fear is probably the most common. Fear of failing or fear of looking stupid. We took a look at the kind of information that you can find on food labels. Reading food labels can help you to eat a healthy diet. And you need to remember that just because something is low in fat, that doesn't mean it's always good for you. So you should look to see how much sugar is in the food you're eating. Words that end in the letters O-S-E are other words for sugar as well. If you don't have the confidence to go back to academic learning, then maybe you should try something more practical, like a class in DIY. You see the results here quickly, and this should give you the confidence you need to try something more academic. We gave you some tips on proofreading, which is reading back over your work and checking it for mistakes. When you're writing important letters or documents, it's a good idea to make a rough draft first to organise your thoughts. You might make mistakes when you do this, but that's normal. Once you have all your ideas down on paper, you need to read what you've written and check for spelling, grammar, punctuation or other mistakes. You can then rewrite your work, making sure to correct all mistakes. Lastly, we gave you some spelling tips for words with a PH sound. The spelling of words in English doesn't always seem to match the way they are pronounced. When the letters P and H are together, they sound like an F. The PH in photograph, telephone and philosophy sounds like an F. So remember, if you hear a new word that begins with an F sound and you can't find it in the dictionary, try finding it under PH. That's it from us for this week. Join us again next week for the last programme in the current series when we'll be looking at progress, reviewing what you've done and where to go from here. But from us for this week, goodbye. <laughs>